good evening everybody today we're going to have a short discussion on uh, solitary pulmonary nodule i'm going to try and keep it very very concise very short and to the point and uh, hopefully our uh, basics will be a little clearer after this uh, presentation so before we start off with the actual presentation i have actually divided this uh, presentation in uh, two basic parts uh in the first part we'll be covering actually uh, what are the characteristics of an spm uh morphologically and second we'll be covering what are the internal characteristics uh, so what exactly is an spm so basically it is a single nodule in the lung parenchyma which is equal to or less than 3 cm in diameter and completely surrounded by lung parenchyma or the pleura lesions which are greater than 3 cm are considered as masses most of the nodules are benign around 30 to 40% uh these are the different uh, spns that we normally come across when we talk about neoplastic lesions these are the most common ones it could be a primary a pulmonary carcinoma then uh, it could be a solitary metastasis it could be a carcinoid over here it could be a hamartoma a cordoma uh then when you're talking about infectious it could be a granuloma some round pneumonia abscess non infectious it could be ra that we're talking about uh vaginas uh vascular it could be an avm it could be a hematoma an atresia congenital a lung cyst and in something other than these uh, we can also come across some uh, external uh, impressions like uh, uh, the impression of a nipple or a pseudo tumor because of some fluid in the fissure a rib fracture i have some examples of this that i'll be showing you guys a little later so there is a certain approach to uh, an spm uh this is briefly the things that you have to look for you have to look for the density the shape the margin internal characteristics and if there are any other uh complex findings so basically we can take these and say that these are the morphological characteristics and these are the internal characteristics so starting off first with the morphological uh, characteristics uh we come to the size size is the most uh, important uh, determinant uh, of trying to divide a benign and a malignant lesion let's understand this entire process we are actually going through this entire effort of trying to characterize this lesion because we want to be more sure in differentiating this from a uh, malignancy and benign lesion size is one of the most important determinants as i've said uh 80% of the benign nodules are less than 2 cm the smaller the nodule the more likelihood of this to be benign uh shape uh we take into consideration uh, a three dimensional uh, ratio of the size which if it is more than 1.78 the more chances of this lesion being benign so what is this uh, ratio it is basically the maximum transverse dimension dividing it by the maximal vertical dimension and this is how we do it so this is the transverse dimension and this is the vertical dimension and uh, the ratio of this if it is more than 1.78 it is more likely uh, to be a benign uh, lesion how are the contours and the margins looking like so if we have a smooth well defined margin more likelihood of this lesion being a benign lesion. although we need to take into consideration that around 21% of malignant lesions can also appear in similar fashion i have an example of this too i'll show you a little later uh if the lesion is uh, lobulated or scalloped more chances of it being uh, malignant although again 25% of this lesions could be benign irregular speculated chances of it being mal malignant are much higher now this is a lesion uh which is having smooth uh, margins it's peripheral and uh, this turned out to be a benign lesion it was a granuloma now on the other hand this again we can see a peripheral smooth marginated well defined uh, nodule but this turned out to be a bladder metastasis 
this is relatively clearer. This is a speculated margin well-defined lesion, which was a non-small cell lung cancer. A lobulated lesion over here, an example. Again, this is a, a speculated marginated lesion, uh, which is based uh, onto the fissure. It turned out to be a bronchiolular cell carcinoma. Another speculated uh, marginated uh, lesion with a little bit of traction bronchitis around it. One more example of uh, speculated marginated lesion. Uh, coming to internal characteristics, the first thing that we will discuss is uh, pseudo cavitation or air bronchogens. Uh, some small uh, focal low attenuation regions within or the periphery of a lesion is known as a pseudo cavitation or air bronchogen. These are generally seen in uh, bronchiolular carcinoma, but can also be seen in adenocarcinomas and lymphoma. This is what it looks like. This is these are the areas of cavitation in a bronchiolular carcinoma. So this is pseudo cavitation. This is a dense nodule, periphery of which we have this area of air bronchitis. This was this turned out to be a malignant lead. Second, coming to cavitation, generally benign lesions have a thinner wall and smooth uh, margin, and malignant lesions have a rather thick and a irregular wall. Uh, any wall which is more than 16 mm is generally malignant and less than 4 mm is generally benign. So this is an example of an uh, aspergillus infection where we can see an air fluid level, a thick, uh, a rather uh, thickish wall. This is a peripheral lesion we can see in uh, X-ray which has a thick wall and a smaller cavitary area. This turned out to be a lung cancer. Another example of a small cell lung cancer, speculated margins, and a small area of cavitation we can see in the center. The presence of fat is also an uh, important determinant. Uh, generally, uh, intranodular fat is seen in hematomas. About 50% of hematomas, we have an uh, intranodular fat present. This is an example of uh, an hematoma, which is a sharply marginated lesion and has some element of fat and calcification. You can see the fat elements over here. Areas of pumped fat, again seen in uh, a hematoma. Presence of calcification, it could be either central, diffuse, laminated or popcorn calcification depending upon uh, what sort of a lesion we're talking about and these are the types of calcification we generally encounter in benign lesions these are relatively reliable uh, indicators about 38 to 63 percent of benign lesions although have no calcifications so these are the different kinds of calcification we come across in benign lesions it could be either diffuse it could be central it could be laminated or it could be popcorn calcifications. This is an example of central area of calcification that we can see in a very well marginated uh, lesion, which turned out to be a granuloma. Another example on an X-ray where you can see a central area of uh, calcification, it was in case of histoplasmosis. Uh, a popcorn kind of calcification in a lobulated lesion. This was a hamartum. About 6% of lung cancers and one third cases of carcinoid show calcifications in diffuse or amorphous uh, type. So we can see this where we have a, a, a lesion which is rather lobulated and we can see the small areas of pumped calcifications over here. This turned out to be a carcinoid. Another example of amorphous calcification, you can see this entire area over here is calcified. This is also an area of calcification, this. So this was an example of a calcification in non-small cell, uh, non cell lung cancer. 
peripheral calcification, this was basically uh, an engulfed uh, granuloma. Uh, lesion, mostly these nodules are uh, solid lesions, but there can be either uh, central or some peripheral areas of ground glass components. Generally, malignant lesions have some associated ground glass element. Uh, if the lesion is partially solid with ground glass components, then the probability of malignancy is about 63%. If it's a non-solid lesion and only ground glass uh, appearance, then 18%. Only solid lesion uh, has a probability of around 7% of malignancy. Now, this is an example of a solid nodule over here. And this is the peripheral area of ground glass around this lesion. So this is more likely to be a malignant lesion. After we are done characterizing these lesions, uh, the most important step is how are you now going to follow up these scans? Now, following scans also has a particular step-by-step uh, uh, -step process, which I'll be showing you. So the first thing that we look at is the growth. The important factor over here is the doubling time or the volume of this lesion. Most malignant nodules double over 40 to 300 days. So anything that is slower than this will usually be benign. And if the lesion is stable for over two years, that which is around 730 days, this lesion is most likely benign, especially if this nodule is more than one centimeter. The drawback of this growth factor is that it becomes a little difficult to uh, assess any nodule which is less than one centimeter in size. This is how we assess the growth rate. Uh, so anything basically which is less than one month, it could be either an infarction, uh, a, a lymphoma metastasis or a sarcoma. About one to eight months, 18 months of doubling time, it could be a car bronchial carcinoma. More than 18 months, it could be a granuloma, a hematoma, or a bronchial carcinoma. And more than two years is usually something that is benign, as I discussed before. Now, this was a lesion which we saw on our first scan. And on a serial CT, after about eight to 10 months, this was the size of it. As you can clearly see that this is uh, the size has increased more than twice, and this turned out to be a metastatic lesion from an osteosarcoma. Second point uh, is the contrast enhancement factor. So any uh, contrast enhancement, which is less than about 15 HU, the chances of it is benign is about 99%. Now this implies when the lesion fulfills these criteria that the nodule is more than 5 mm, it is relatively spherical, it is relatively homogeneous, and there are no other artifacts. If the contrast enhancement is more than 20, then the lesion is more likely malignant. This is an example of contrast enhancement. This is a plane scan where the contrast is, uh, where the density is 7. A scan after one minute the contrast enhancement HU was 28. And after about one and a half to two minutes, it was 35. So this was a metastatic uh, lesion of a melanoma. Um, as you move ahead in time, some newer advances have come in. Um, you will come across uh, a lot of these things in future where AI will be used in uh, trying to uh, diagnose this SPN. SPN is one of the areas where uh, artificial intelligence is really growing, uh, but uh, it does have its own uh, drawbacks, like a subplural or a fissural lesion cannot be identified by uh, using computer-aided diagnosis, and a lesion less than 4 even is a little difficult to uh, characterize. So we are still further away by, uh, in terms of uh, the technology available to us in form of uh, AI. Humor intervention is very much still needed. Dual energy scans are, uh, which uh, we are aware of, basically the need of uh, acquiring multiple scan is not there. 
some people can also do an MR for uh, lesion characteristic, but the lesion generally uh, performs in a similar fashion, SCT. We can also do an uh, FDG PET, but remember FDG PET has a lot of false negatives and false positive when it comes to lung lesions, like uh, something like a carcinoid or a bronchial or carcinoma can have a very low FDG uptake and uh, something like a TB or a rheumatoid lesion can have a very high uptake. So to give you an example, this is a non-small cell uh, lung carcinoma where you can see a nodule which has speculated margins and on uh, PET you can see a relatively high uptake. This was a case of uh, a pulmonary cyst. You can see that there is an area of photopenia This is another lesion of uh, a small cell carcinoma and uh, also one peripheral lesion over here. So this turned out to be uh, malignant. As you can see, there is a high uptake there. Uh, Felicina Society has uh, a step-by-step -step approach for a follow-up of SPM. And what they say is that if the lesion is less than 8 mm and if the patient has no factors for lung cancer, the lesion is lesions lesser than 4 mm, follow-up is completely optional on the physician. If it is between 4 to 6 months, then 12-month uh, repeat CT and no further follow-up. If it is between 6 to 8 mm, then you repeat a CT after 6 to 12 months and again after 18 to 24 months. If uh, the patient does have uh, risk factors and the lesion is less than 4, then repeat a CT after 12 months and no further follow. If uh, the lesion is uh, between 4 to 6 mm, repeat after 6 to 12 months and again after a an year. And if it is between 6 to 8 mm, then after 3 to 6 months. And again, repeat after 1 year and 2 years. These risk factors basically include smoking, age, and any previous history of uh, malignancy in the family. If the lesion is between 8 to 30 mm and if there is low probability, that is less than 5%, then serial CTs after 6, 12, and 24 months. If uh, 5 to 60% of uh, probability, that is uh, intermediate probability, then we do an FDG. We can do a biopsy. And then, uh, depending upon uh, what it comes out, we can decide the uh, treatment. If there's a high probability, then we can directly uh, go ahead for wax. Uh, some uh, very common mimics that we come across uh, of an SPM, like something like this we can see on an X-ray. Uh, when we did a CT, it turned out to be an old uh, fracture. This was appearing on a CT. Uh, this is what uh, basically an ECG lead uh, looks like on an X-ray. There could also be a superficial neurofibromas that we can see over here, but on an X-ray, they can appear as a nodule. This was uh, an example of bronchial atresia. Uh, I'm purposely leaving behind this uh, information under this slide because I'll be sharing this uh, PPT with uh, research. And uh, whenever you go through this uh, PPT again, this uh, explanation will help you understand these images a little better. You can see this atresia over here. Again, this was an example of uh, sequestration. An example of an AVM. A hematoma. This was actually after the gunshot wound where these are the metal components. These are the references I used in this uh, presentation. Um, I would sincerely like to thank uh, Eddie Search uh, for this uh, opportunity. Um, I hope this covers certain uh, basic aspects of uh, SPM. Remember, all this effort of actually characterizing the uh, solitary pulmonary nodule is only to try and differentiate this lesion from benign and malignant. Thank you.